Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss the antagonistic views on the Northern Ireland Protocol on trade. Uh, the Irish government want the emphasis to be on the trade benefits that the protocol provides. Boris Johnson initially sold the deal as representing the best of both worlds for Northern Ireland as well. So you would think the UK government and the Irish government totally on the same page here. However, as some commentators have recently pointed out, the UK government don't really want this to be the message right now because that would suggest that Britain, you know, the rest of the UK, are getting a worse deal out of Brexit. So what does Boris Johnson want out of Brexit? But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, the Northern Ireland Protocol was on the agenda again last week as the EU agreed to the UK request for a three-month extension on the export of chilled meats from Britain to Northern Ireland. Now, I talked about this being an issue of just kicking the can down the road, but how perhaps the British government would not at all object if the situation resolved itself by Northern Irish retailers simply buying all their chilled meats locally or via the Republic of Ireland. Is the extension less about kicking the can down the road and more about giving Northern Irish businesses the chance to go, look, you're going to have trouble importing from Britain. Maybe you'd like to import from somewhere else. After all, checks aren't a politically contentious issue if there's nothing to actually check. That way Boris Johnson can say, oh yeah, we're going to apply full checks. Oh, is it going to be holding up a load of goods? No, because those goods are actually going to go there. You know, and there is growing news that supermarkets are doing just that. They're buying from producers around Ireland, Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, rather than Britain. The market will always, of course, adapt to changing conditions if they have the capacity to do so. And those who can't adapt quickly enough will fail. Very much like evolution for the Northern Irish politicians who believe in that anyway. Uh, in uh, unrelated news, I hear Geoffrey Donaldson is the new leader of the DUP now and has a cunning plan to sort the whole thing out. Naturally, it involves unilaterally breaching our treaty with the EU, as well as breaking World Trade Organization rules. They do acknowledge that it's going to mean consequences for the UK, but, but they're totally fine with that. I'm not entirely sure the rest of us are, but OK then. That being said, you can see why some might back Donaldson's plans to just play hardball. After all, Johnson's Brexit minister, David Frost, is claiming that he has done the same with the EU and it has brought results. He doesn't actually seem to be able to name any results as such, but the whole point of his replacing Michael Gove was to do things differently. So he made confrontation his style and so obviously then has to claim that it has worked. But what is the end goal? It's all very well thinking of Boris Johnson making decisions on an almost hourly basis just to take the path of least resistance. But what are the long term Brexit plans of the government? Now, it's been noted from both government trade policies and statements from David Frost that the goal appears to be a form of global trade that doesn't actually exist. You know, a trade model that doesn't exist anywhere in the world. He's created this imaginary world which adopts a particular attitude to trade, which just so happens to suit the Conservatives' way of thinking. The problem is it's not actually adopted anywhere. So it's not a case of moving away from the EU way of doing free trade to another way of doing it. You know, we'd essentially have to persuade the largest markets on earth to completely change the way they do things. Now, I don't always instantly dismiss an idea for major reform, even on the world stage. There are a lot of things that the world is getting wrong. And if someone has a better idea, of course, reform can happen. And you look at the Conservatives idea. Well, we should just have completely free trade with no rules. We just completely open borders. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've read reports in the past before Brexit even that suggested if we had this, the productivity around the world would be twice as much. You know, it, it would be it would be much better. But individual countries natural protectionism kicks in you know it only happens when the majority see it as in their interest if you want major international reform 
the majority of the world has to see it as in their individual national interests. This is not occurring because the Conservatives' plans are not in the interests of the majority, but a small number of people who have houses in like Kensington or Monaco or something. I mean, look at the concept of free trade. The Conservatives say we needed to leave the EU to pursue free trade. But the EU have formed the largest free trade area in the world. Now, sure, they have very protectionist rules, which is not at all free trade, which affect anyone outside of that area, which now includes us. But consider why this is. The EU are no longer the solely trade-focused peace project that they were as the EEC. They are now an organisation that, on top of all that, has major social and political reform on their agenda. They use trade to promote higher standards. That includes standards of worker and environmental protections, as well as on the goods themselves. They only exclude those who will not sign up to those higher standards. The Conservatives' attitude to free trade has no plan to it at all. There's no aim to it. They just want to open up our market to the world and then expect the rest of the world to do likewise for us. Only the rest of the world isn't doing that because it's completely mad. And yet this is the strategy that we are pursuing. That if we just open up our trade borders, the rest of the world will do the same. Now, I remember discussing before we left the EU that the UK were in a quite a tricky position regarding trade deals if we left the EU on hard Brexit terms which was the only form of leaving the EU the Conservatives wanted to consider. This is because we'd lose favourable trading terms with most of the world. So we'd be desperate to get trade deals. Now, whilst chasing those deals, we'd have one of two options. One, we make market access difficult for those other countries so that we had something to bargain with. That's what you do in a trade deal. You are bargaining market access. We want this market access we want this access into your market. In return, we will give you this access into our market. So we need to make trade difficult with us so that we have something to bargain with in the hopes of eventually getting decent terms. The problem is that that would take time. And in the meantime, we struggle to import goods, which means people would notice that Brexit is costing our consumer choice because all of a sudden it's very difficult to import things. Or secondly, we could give other countries easy market access, meaning that people could still import basically what they wanted without seeing massive price increases by and large, with a few caveats, but that we'd have nothing to bargain with in trade deals. Now we pursued the second option, but I have to confess to getting something wrong because I described the outcome as no deal at all that we wouldn't get the trade deals on the basis that we wouldn't be able to negotiate significant market access and therefore would not sign a deal where we didn't get that. After all, what's the point? But we did sign. I was wrong, wasn't I? We did sign and we are signing because actually we seem happy to give the other side everything they ask for in return for almost nothing that we want. So why would the world follow our example? And what are we doing to persuade them that our economic model is best? We suffered the worst pandemic recessions of all major economies. That's not convincing people that we've got the best and brightest of politicians in charge. We certainly don't have economic masterminds in charge of policy. We're also headed for more economic harm, which, if that doesn't reverse the political polls in 2022, assuming Labour can hold themselves together for a bit longer, I don't know what to think. You know, there was an interesting take on this I, I saw from a few commentators on uh, proposals for the future, on David Frost's proposals for the future of a post-Brexit trade with the EU. Essentially, Frost wants the UK and the EU to agree equivalence where if one side drops their standards, the other side just increases their checks. This is a complete nonsense for multiple reasons, but most importantly, equivalence is not the same as alignment as such. It's an agreement that each side has equivalent, but not the same standards. So when it comes to the issue of one side dropping their standards, it invites an argument. The EU may decide that we have dropped our standards, to which the UK will say, no, we haven't. They're just different. They're still equivalent. Now, given that the UK is carrying out the EU's checks for them on goods passing from Britain to Northern Ireland, that invites complete chaos. 
because the EU would go, um, right, with this Australia deal, you're now letting all this stuff in, your standards have dropped. So you need to know, according to this agreement, you need to increase checks on the Irish sea border. But then Boris Johnson and David Frost would argue, well, they'd argue two things. They'd first of all argue, like I said, well, we haven't actually lowered our standards, we've just changed them, but actually you'll find that they're still equivalent standards. And then the secondly, uh, oh, we don't actually even have the staff or the facilities to carry out all the checks you want anyway. So they will both argue that they shouldn't have to carry out more checks and can't carry out more checks even if they should. And this is why Brexit is going to be very messy for some time yet to come. It would be messy anyway to untangle decades worth of alignment at the best of times. But when we have a UK government that is denying the very reality of international trade norms and even the existence of the single market itself, and is, is breaking a few WTO rules, the source of everything that is the EU, the single market, um, it, it's, you know, we're pretending it doesn't exist. So it's not even like we can start making progress. You know, we could find ourselves two or three years further down the line and still not making any tangible progress. What Frost is essentially trying to do is have the same arguments that the UK had after the referendum, especially in 2017, 2018, when we triggered Article 50. But this time, we're trying to have those arguments after we've already signed treaties. The treaties have been signed. International trading rules are what they are. Neither of these things are going to be set aside for a sheep-infested plague island that doesn't want to face up to reality. But there we go. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.